Hello and welcome to Sunshine for Your Life. You know, I do quite a bit of traveling around the state, back and forth around the state. And so I was on one of my trips, I was going to Maine to see some relatives. And when I took, this is before the shutdown due to the coronavirus, of course. But as I went past, as I drove back to Maine, I, uh, I stopped at a McDonald's just to get a snack. And when it was busy, it was around lunchtime, and it was busy, and there were a lot of people there. And there was a woman standing there by the counter, and she was saying over and over again, I wish I had a penny. If only I had a penny. I really need a penny. I wished I could have a penny. And she was talking to herself. She wasn't talking to anybody else. But I heard her, and I think God deliberately put me in a place where I would hear her. Because others were eating, and they were having fun with each other, and they were talking, and they weren't paying any attention to her. They probably never even heard her. But I, as a single person, went in, and she was standing there by herself saying, I wished I had a penny. So I really figured that God put me in there for a purpose. So I walked up to her and uh, I said, excuse me. I tried to be gentle about it. I says, but did I hear you say that you needed to have a penny? Because it's an odd request, you know. You normally wouldn't hear something like that. And she says, oh, if only you knew how much I'd like to have a penny. And she went over it again and again and talked about it again and again. I wished I had a penny. If only I had a penny. And the poor girl was hungry and they wouldn't let her eat because she's one penny shy of getting her meal. So I said to her, well, you know, that's a problem I can fix. And so I reached into my wallet and I gave her a penny and I says, would you like more? I tried to give her more, but she says, oh, no, no, a penny's enough, a penny's enough. And she went back and she got her meal. And she must have thanked me at least 15 times because I was eating too. We weren't eating together. I didn't even know her name, but she kept thanking me for that penny. And I thought, gee, if only if someone had at the counter or somebody had said, look, here's a penny, but I did it. I think God put me in the place to do that. So in our Christian walk, we are supposed to help meet the needs of other people. And by doing so, we show others that we care for them. And we also show God's love for them. So how can we best serve God? How can we help each other? Well, we have to realize that we need each other. You don't have to be a genius and you don't have to be perfect to be a help to somebody else when they need it. And they will appreciate it and you will get the rewards for that. So what seems like simple to us, like for me it was just a penny, but for somebody else it might be the making of their whole day. And I think for her this was the making of her whole day. We also need to realize that we're on a journey. Jesus is coming soon. The Bible says that Jesus is coming soon, and I'm going to be starting a series on that shortly. And uh, we need to lead people to know him. So how does a person know that God loves them? Well, they know because they watch us. If you are a Christian, you will be watched. There's no question about it. People will see whether you're walking the walk that you talk about uh, or if you're ac actually behaving like what they assume a Christian is supposed to behave like. So we need to realize that we, need, that we show God's love by our behavior, by what we do and what we say and how we act toward other people. And they can see through us if we don't do it, uh, things it, that are Christian, and we're not really Christians or a name only, they're going to know it for sure. So I'd like to take a look, and I have a little story here about a group of little children. They were in a race. Now these are a group of about 10, 8 to 10 children, and they were all excited because they were in a race. And they had some cognitive difficulties. They, they had uh, problems, but they wanted to be in this race and they were all excited about it. So they, they were handicapped. So they were marching to, and, and racing with each other and someone was obviously going to win and get to the finish line first. One of the children fell and started to cry. Every single child heard that and every single child stopped their running, turned around, and they all walked back to the child that had fallen and was crying. They lifted him up, they put him back on his feet, 
They brushed him off, they kissed him, and then they did something that was remarkable that people remember to this day. They got in a line, this was not coached, they got in a line beside each other. They linked arms and hands, and they walked as one line and walked to the finish line, all of them stepping over the end point together. And it was so moving that people were crying in the stands when they saw it, because these children exhibited the best of behavior. They weren't concerned about winning, winning, winning. I'm better than you. I'm faster than you. They were totally concerned about each other and totally trying to help each other over the finish line, which they did. So it was a remarkable story. I heard another story about a coach. He was coaching some five-year-olds four or five year olds, they were playing a game, and he quit. And the reason that he quit, he said, was because he could not make them understand how important winning was and the fact that they were supposed to fight to the finish and they were supposed to win. What five-year-old thinks of that anyway? They play to have fun. They run to have fun. And it's not important for a young child to think about winning or losing. They're growing. They're exercising their muscles. They're gaining more strength. They're gaining more control of their balance. Lots of good things happen to them, but it's not based upon winning or losing. In our society, we have a society in which we have to be better than somebody else. We've got to prove ourselves. We're better than somebody else. We're faster than somebody else. And I hate it when sports people, people in various sports, always say, I'm the one. I'm the best. I'm going to prove myself. And uh, this kind of thing, with no concern about how somebody else feels or how, what's how, what somebody else is like, we are put on earth to help each other, not necessarily to win over each other, but to help each other. These children were able to do that. So the the fact, the fact is that we do need each other, and somehow we have to help each other out. Sometimes things happen to us that we don't even understand. We have accidents, we're ill, various things happen, and we're always asking why. Why did this happen? Why me? Why now? Why this? Sometimes it's better just to accept life as it is, handle it the best you can, rely upon God to help you, and walk with you through throughout the, the, the challenge, whatever it is, and to remember that if you go through a lot of things, you can be a help to people who are going through those same things that are coming afterwards. There is a story about a flyer. This occur occurred in World War II, uh, actually earlier than World War II, but there was a, a, a it's called, his name was Douglas B Bader, and he was a British fighter pilot, and he lost both of his legs in the an accident, in a flying accident, but he still fought and flew in World War II, and he was knighted for his work with the disabled, and he was talking to a boy who had just lost his leg in a car accident, and what he said was this, don't listen to anyone who tells you that you can't do this or that. That's nonsense. Have a go at everything. Go to school. Join in all the games that you can. Go anywhere you want to, but never, never let them persuade you that things are too difficult or impossible. Now, the reason he said that is that he himself was injured. He himself had lost both legs in a flying accident, but he was still functioning. And had it, would he be able to have helped this boy if he had quit and said, oh, I've lost both legs, now life is difficult, I can't do things anymore? No, he kept on and he kept on and he kept on. And he was there for an encouragement to the boy who lost his leg in the car accident. And I imagine he was an encouragement to many others. There are a lot of times when things happen to us and we don't understand why it is. But we can keep persevering, we can keep going. Going. And as a result of that, we can help other people who also need to see that it's possible to keep going, it's possible to reach your goals, and you don't have to quit because you have a problem. As a matter of fact, it can help to spur you on. 
God has his hand on us, and if we have the right attitude, he is going to help us in ways that we can't even, that we can't even imagine. So what is the attitude that we should have if we're plagued with something and, and we don't know what to do? Well, I'm going to do two or three scriptures here. Uh, the first scripture on the screen is going to be Romans 8, 28, and this is what it says. All things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. And I want to read that again. That's the whole verse. All things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. So things have happened that, that you don't understand. The lady that I talked about didn't have a penny that she needed, but that penny was provided to her through me, although I would have been happy to give her more than that. That's all she would accept just enough. And uh, things happen to us and people help us out. Things happen to other people and we help them out. But whatever it is, all things, no matter what it is, turn out to enhance us. And uh, they, are, uh, they work together for good. All things work together for good. And you may not understand it. If you have a problem, somehow it's going to work together for good. For those who have been called according to his purpose, and that would be referring to Christians, people who are suffering that are Christians, people who are learning from those who are suffering that are also Christians. People go through their tests, people go through their problems, but all things work together for good. And uh, the problem is that we have, when we have, when bad things happen, is that we're likely to slip into despair. But despair is a kind of a loss of hope, and we don't ever have to have a loss of hope as a Christian. Hope is what you need if you're going to stand strong for others and yourself. Now the second is, uh, the second uh, scripture on the screen is going to be Psalm 37, 39, and this is what it says. But the salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. That's not the whole thing. Let me read the whole thing. But the salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. He is their strength in times of trouble. No matter what it is that you're going through, God can be your strength, and he can be your salvation, and he's also your strength in times of trouble, and he will be there for you. And we look at things from our own perspective. What we wish for, what we want, what we think we need, but sometimes we're amiss. Sometimes we don't wish, we don't want the things that we should have, and sometimes we wish for things we shouldn't have. So whatever happens to you, ask God to help you through it for His glory. <coughs> and I'm going to close with the third verse, and this is what it is. <coughs> Imitate God, therefore, in all you do, because you are his dear children. Imitate God, therefore, in all you do, because you are his dear children. Well, we'll close it here. We'll do something else next time. Please join me then.